Now let's begin with the iSCSI failover functionality. Um, what we want to set for the destination is we want to set, enable it for iSCSI functionality. And you want to set it as the secondary and point the primary node's IP address and place that in there. Hit apply. Then you go back to your source. And you want to do the same settings, only that you want to select it as the primary and point the secondary node's IP address, which last octet is 221. The ping node is very important. Um, this helps with the heartbeat negotiation and keeps the some parameters alive between the uh, the failover tasks that we have running. Uh, typical ways you could set your or probably the best way to set your ping node would be to use either a firewall, a router, or even your VMware server. Uh, you want to have something that has a greater uptime value. Even a UPS with the NIC port is also good. Once this is complete, you'll see your the volume replication task that we created, and they'll be available on this left side. Once you select them, then you be able to click your arrow button, hit apply, and at that point you're ready to go to start your iSCSI failover for those volumes. Keep in mind that uh, iSCSI failover is for iSCSI volumes only, and that it's for uh, the synchronous mode only as well, and not for asynchronous. Once everything is in a status of OK, and you see that your primary is active, your ping nodes are OK, and all your Ethernet ports are communicating, and your volume replication tasks are consistent. So this is important because you really want to keep those consistent before you start sending I.O. and data on to your targets. And once we have this complete, now let's set up our NAS shares and enable NFS uh, file protocol for the VMware. This way we can store our ISO images and install from there. Now if we click on the configuration tab and then NAS settings, here we're, all we really need to do is we're just going to use the workgroup internal LDAP. We don't need anything else for authentication methods. Uh, we're going to use the NFS protocol. We're going to enable that. Once we complete that and hit the apply button, we want to go to our NAS resource shares. Now, here you can create anything. I've just used something called NFS uh, to simplify it. And once I create my NAS share, select the NAS volume that we've created. We want to be able to click on the left side where the share has been created called NFS. Uh, for this reason, so I just made guess with any one password, just simple. And as we scroll on down, you'll see that we will need to enable the NFS share access for this file protocol. Again, I left it for, for basic considerations. Um, we have abilities for you to do allow and write IP addresses for a little bit more security. And you can have uh, many different IP addresses and you can ask different subnets and, and also class A or B or C networks in here. Once this is completed, you hit the apply, and at this point, we're ready to go into our VMware server and begin setting that up. Okay, so uh, here we have on our VMware server, we're going to make sure that we want to go to uh, the storage adapters. In storage adapters, you want to make sure you see your iSCSI software adapter installed in VMware. And we're going to need to set our initiator settings. Now, if you remember, we set our virtual IP address to 192.168.3.244. So let's apply that in there. And that should be able to come right up. Once we're complete with that, we can go ahead and close this out. And of course, it's asking to rescan the host bus adapters. Ah, there we go. So now we have our 50 gig volume that we've created that's using auto failover. And we also created a 100 gig volume. So now we're able to see our iSCSI targets using the virtual IP address of 
.244. Now we're ready to go into our storage for the hardware of VMware and be able to draw upon that capacity and use the target for storage. So we're going to click on Add Storage here on the VMware. And at first we're going to select the disk line. And we'll select the 50 gig where we're going to be using that to install the DSS v6 onto. We're just going to name it DSS v6. And we'll click next, take the defaults. And momentarily we should see the 50 gig storage identification coming up right after it loads up. And after this, we'll load the secondary one, which we'll use for our volumes. Okay, so now we have our capacity here is, is showing at 49.7 after it uses for some reservations. And let's go ahead and begin with our next storage capacity. So we're going to use the last bit for our volumes. And we'll just use this as volumes with DSS v6. Take the defaults and refresh it. And there we go. So now we, the next step we, we want to do here is we want to be able to add our NFS to be able to get the ISO images. And I copied them previously, so just to speed up things in the process here. So we want to add the IP address. Now, we're not going to use the virtual IP address. This I'm going to use the actually the, the node's IP address, the primary node's IP address. Of course, you can use really any DSS system or IP address for, let's say, even this, the destination server. For this uh, case, we're just going to use the primary node's IP address, which is 192.168.0.220. And what we have to place here is the slash, and then, of course, we're going to say NFS. So that will be the share name. First, we'll just call it NFS for simplicity reasons. Click Next. And then we'll do a refresh. Great. So now we have our NAS volume showing. And if we look and browse the data store, just to verify that we are seeing ISO images, there is the version of DSS, DSS v6, build 4452. So pretty much all our work's done now. At this point, we're ready to create our virtual machine and go into setting it up. So we're going to right click on the server here of the ESX server. And we're going to go into create new virtual machine. We're going to go with the standard default, so we're going to take typical. And we'll call this DSS v6. And we're going to take our storage pool from the 50 gig that we've created. And we wanted to set the operating system to Linux. So here we want to be able to select other 2.6 Linux 64-bit. Now DSS defaults into 64-bit, but it can be switched to 32-bit. There's more advantages of using the 64-bit over the 32-bit. We can talk a little bit about that during our waiting of the installation. Now all I really need is 2 gigabyte of the volume. And that even goes for a RAID volume. Um, even if just for this purpose, we only need 2 gig. Anything more, you're just wasting the space. And you won't be able to use it. I'm going to edit the values uh, before we start the completion of the virtual machine. This way it saves us time. So at this point, we're ready to continue. We see our values. 
And I'm going to add just 2 gig of memory and put that value in there. Uh, I'm also going to add another NIC. So I'd have two network interface controllers. And let's just use the typical E1000. Leave the network uh, label as it is. We're going to want to connect that on a power on. So now I have two NICs. And I also want to add a capacity. So this way it allows me to create a volume group. So if we look here, we're going to add select the hard disk. And we're going to create a new virtual disk. And we're going to put this probably let's set this for 50 gigs. And we'll click next and finish. We'll add one more uh, item where we can. Uh, actually, that should be good enough for now. And uh, the one more thing you really must do, or you're not going to be able to install, is on the CD, you want to be able to set your data store where the DSS ISO images is there. So let's click on the new CD DVD. We're going to click on data store ISO file. We're going to browse to the NFS volume that we created. And we're going to select the DSS V6 image, which is build 4452. One last thing you need to do is make sure that it's connected on power on. So please select that. It will not install. And I think we're ready to go and begin. Oh, here we go. More air. Let's find out what's going on. Something must have happened, so let's do that. This is good when we have incidents like this. We can troubleshoot right online and see where I might have messed up. So we're going to select DSS V6, and we'll take Linux. And we'll take 2 gig. Okay, and we'll do two gig of memory. And we will take our CD ROM, grab the ISO of DSS V6, make sure that connect on at power on. Then we can add our Space and capacity. Oh, I think it was the data store, specify data store on that. So let's let's state that uh, this is the 20. In here we're gonna select volumes with DSS V6. And let's finish that. 